Okay, well, on this Technique Tuesday, I thought I will talk about the different ways of making piping and uh, what, uh, what, what tools we have, what different methods, because there are many different ways to do it. Um, I'm again, I'm referring in here first about the Baby Lock Sewing Machine Accessories Workbook, which is, again, mine is a bit older version of it. And this one, there are all kinds of techniques. It's a really cool book. But there's a little section about piping using a pearl and piping foot. And, and then it has a couple others just continue on how to even connect things and then seal piping, mock piping. So they have a few different piping uh, instructions on this one, which is a, it's a really good reference. Uh, but because they only really refer on one size of a piping, I wanted to go on my set of feet that I have picked up from my stash that I can use to uh, create piping and attach piping. So uh, very commonly, uh, we the often instructions tell you to use a zipper foot. So I have uh, lined up in a bottom row on this one all my zipper feet that I have. That's the standard zipper foot that comes with the machine. It works with certain type of a very small piping pretty well. And the uh, same with this narrow zipper foot. This actually works with a little bit heavier piping better than this one. And then uh, there is even a Teflon uh, non-stick coated zipper foot if you put zippers on a vinyl. So, well, I guess if you put piping on, uh, uh, on a vinyl, that would really be a great one also because it is non-stick. This one is an adjustable zipper foot. This allows me to put any kind of a piping on it and of course all zippers too. So those would work on certain type of zippers, uh, 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 certain type of uh, piping also. But then this next row is uh, really specifically called piping feet. The first one is called the mini piping foot, because the groove is much smaller. And I will go through on a little bit later about the different filler course when I would use this. And then there's a left piping foot, which uh, the groove is not in the center, it's more towards the left. And it is kind of a tiny one, fairly small one. The next one is pearl and piping foot, which I can use attached beads also. So that works with the, a lot of it medium size of a uh, piping. This one is the creative feet foot. It's uh, um, they have different angles for different machines, or I can snap it on straight onto my machine too. But this one uh, again, it works great for pearls and piping. It's a really kind of a interchangeable with this one. And then we ha I have a couple different double coring feet. Uh, the difference on this one is that uh, the uh, one on the right side has bigger grooves, so I can use that even on a bigger piping. So those are specific pearl and piping feet. Well, then I also have some other feet that uh, I can use on a certain type of piping because they happen to have a groove in them. Uh, the next row in this one is um, all my different invisible or concealed zipper feet. And I had done a little uh, one video some time ago about the cra uh, crazy patch below, which I mainly uh, uh, made in, with the searcher. But on that one, I also show how to uh, use the uh, invisible zipper foot to put the invisible zippers. I may do another video on that one also. And then the last row are all, all of my different pin tuck feet. And uh, all the difference on these ones are that the pin tucks really are designed when you do an alum sewing and, and uh, sew pin tucks with a double needle. So depending on what size needle I use, I have different size of a uh, pin tuck feet. But if I have a really, really tiny piping, I could use those ones also. So they go on anything from seven grooves to three grooves. So this one has a fairly large grooves, which really would work very well, almost kind of like the mini piping foot. So all of these would work or uh, to put a piping, uh, create a piping and install a piping. Well, I have on my table some of the ingredients that we need to make a if I make our own piping. Because you can buy pre-made piping at the store, or you could use, do also use some of the pre-made cording, which I saw a bit later, some of those ones. But uh, if you want to make your own piping, which I often do, one of the things what we need is some kind of filler cord. And here is just uh, some things from my stats, uh, the type of filler cords that I use, depending on the size of a piping. And I have some examples in the pack also. Sometimes if I want to make a really, really just a kind of a tiny, almost invisible piping, I've been using the gimp cord. So this is very small. And this is the time that I would use one of these uh, um, 
print tuck feet because uh, that coring will fit nicely inside of that one. So that's how I kind of measure to see which would work great. So some of these smaller cords that would work great. So that is um, that will make a very, very tiny piping, but some of the heirloom sewing I use that one. Well, then there's a little bit larger one. This is actually uh, Van der Moore's uh, uh, Pintac belt cord, and uh, it's more of a home decor type of thing. Uh, it's uh, a little bit larger, so I would I could use on this one uh, uh, that uh, a three groove Pintac foot, or I could also use the concealed zipper or invisible zipper foot. Or then, of course, the mini piping foot works perfectly with that one. That's really what it is designed for. And then I could use also that uh, the, uh, the standard zipper feet because that is about the size of a zipper coil. So that would work great with the standard zipper foot. So that's a fairly thin uh, piping uh, filler cord. Uh, that one I think, believe is a polyester one. This is 100% cotton. It's a little bit thicker, but all those same feet, except maybe the uh, invisible zipper foot might be a bit tight for that one, but several the other feet work great on that one. Here's just a leftover piece that I had done of piping for my nephew's uh, son's uh, uh, christening gown. So I had made my own piping out of this uh, light blue batiste, and then I inserted it into the seams. So I used that uh, soft cotton for that one. Um, here's a leftover piping that I had used that same thickness, this uh, same kind of a, uh, co a cotton piping. I had made the piping and I made a little Christmas, uh, I was just one day using some scraps on my pile. <laughs> so I made a little Christmas table topper. Uh, and uh, on instead of having just normal binding on the edges, what I did, I put the piping on it. So that we're going to see the little bit in the edge. So it's just added a little extra trim on that one. Then going a little bit heavier, this one again is one of those um, uh, more home decor type of things, which uh, this is the micro belt cord. Um, again, I would most likely still be able to use, well, the mini piping foot gets a bit tight, but this ordinary uh, pearl and piping feet would work great with that one. And maybe, of course, then uh, the narrow zipper foot. But going on to this heavier, your standard zipper foot is not a very good option. You can't get close enough with those ones. And then, well, then I have just, uh, some a little bit heavier one. This is then a belt cord. Again, more home decor stuff. And a leftover piece that, that, that I had done on, uh, on some items on that one. And there's actually a little leftover from uh, uh, piping that I had done with the search. Because this fabric was home decor fabric, which uh, ravels really, really a lot. So on this one, I use then the searcher to make my piping. That's another great way to do a piping and install it. Uh, I have on my searcher, uh, on the YouTube videos, I have instructions for that. And that is kind of just kind of the same one showing that uh, from the home decor things that uh, uh, the little sample piece that how to do the corners. And I'll show that with the machine. Then, um, but the previous one was more a home decor type of thing. This one is cotton. It's a little bit uh, softer, but it's about the same thickness. Again, the same feet would work with that one. Then we start getting a bit heavier piping. Well, this one now I could possibly use one of these largest um, uh, cording feet. I actually call this cording feet, even though they are double piping because that crew is big enough for that one. So I could use the, some of these ones, or then uh, one of the options when I start getting these really big ones, I like using the uh, adjustable zipper foot. And if that's not all, I even have one even bigger one here. And this one is uh, in Panda more, so there's more home decor type of thing. Has a little leftover, some, sometimes I done a pillow. And uh, I just I didn't like just the boring kind of a of white piping, so I sewed the decorative stitch first in the middle of it before I made my piping. So you can make kind of a embellished piping this way also. But that that makes a nice piping. And this one I would most likely use that adjustable zipper foot because now we're getting very very big ones. And I had used that one on this little Christmas pillow. So that is that really thick piping, and I put it that around this little Christmas pillow. 
there we go no and here's just another pillow that i had used that uh, thinner one this is the one that was the uh this uh belt cord i had used that one around this pillow and then let me show one more the christmas stocking is a huge stocking but on the edge of the stocking i had used that same size of a piping co uh, pillow cord and made my own piping on edge of that one well other than just the pillow cord and piping you could of course always use some of the uh, pretty home decor trims especially home decor items uh, that's a very pretty trim that's the leftover piece and here is the pillow oh, kind of can't get in the camera uh, there's a pillow that I had used that uh, cording on there and this by the way there's the connect it's a little tricky to try to do the connection on these heavier cordings but uh, that one is a little silk pillow so I put the look at uh, this pretty cording around it then I was making a little bit of a smaller pillow and on this one it's a similar kind of a cording but this one uh, is just much much smaller so on this one I took the lazy way out and I just wrapped around those ends so that and were inside in there so that was that was small enough the bigger cordings you can't do that so like this big one in here, I would need to uh, uh, do a little uh, different ways on connecting that one. So those are the kind of the types of, and here's a little sample, <laughs> scrap sample that I had done for how you are uh, in, uh, inserting it into between the two layers. So here's the, uh, those are the tools that we would need. Of course, then we need fabric and the fabric needs to be cut uh, either straight or grain or bias. Bias would give you a little bit more flexibility and especially if you go around corners. I normally cut my uh, my uh, piping fabric uh, quite a bit wider than needed because it's easier to handle the bit wider piece and then I will just in the end I will trim it off. So uh, here's, here's my favorite tool. I believe they discontinued this one but the, uh, we have different other brands in the shop that have this kind of a piping uh, rulers makes it very easy to trim it to have nice exact seam allowance like you see it in this one this was much wider piece of fabric I uh, uh, just uh, made the piping and then I put the groove onto the quarter inch mark and then used the rotary cutter to cut it that's where I have I get really pretty nice finished piping so those are tools we need so I'm gonna go on a sewing machine and show how to use some of these feet okay um, I'm gonna start with the standard zipper foot that comes pretty much every baby lock and brother machine um, it's I think there's about everyone that we have this kind of a zipper foot some of the ones may also come with the adjustable one but that's the gen generic one uh, it's great one for putting zippers because we can uh, attach it on either side and on this one, I uh, then I can have my needle at the center position and it will put my needle right beside the zipper coil. Well, this size of a piping is not much larger than the zipper coil, so I can definitely use this one. So I would just wrap it on the, on the wrong side. And this is where I would need to use my needle level, but my camera is kind of between, the lay, uh, between me and so I had to do the, uh, the old fashioned way here. Push the button. So I will just wrap it around and it is important to keep that cording right next to, kind of tightly on that fold. When I do that uh, really, really small one from that gimp cord, I do uh, press the edge on that one, have a little crease on it because it makes it easier to do that really small one. Any of these larger ones, I do not press it because you have that little crease mark otherwise. But those, uh, the gimp cord, it does help to keep it that way. So now all I have to do is just to line up that toe of that standard zipper foot right next to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the cording, the pillow cord, and stitch away. When I'm stitching this way, my needle's not going exactly next to the cord. When you make the piping, you really don't want to it either. You want to have it a little bit looser, because then when you attach it, that's when you want to move your needle position closer and that way your first stitching won't show. So that's the reason why if you look at the storeboard pipings, uh, they, they don't have that, that stitching going right next to either. So that would be a very easy way to do. 
a piping. So here we have, and I'm gonna yellow thread on my on my machine. So here is my tiny tiny little piping, just done with the standard zipper foot. And I just had my needle at the center position on that one, and I hooked that one on the left side of that foot. Because then uh, the similar way. Uh, this narrow zipper foot would work because it has the same kind of a groove underneath as the standard one has um, And this one I can just use a little bit heavier cording than this one because I can get closer This one is no good for anything thicker pretty much than this one because I can't uh, it's hard to get close enough Even if I use my my left needle position. So I pretty much only use that one for this size but one of my favorite ones for doing mini piping of this size is to use the mini piping foot. It just gives me a little bit more control. So that's the one I'll be using. I'll do another demo on that one. Okay, I have snapped on that mini piping foot and put the filo cord the same way as before, just out on that inside. This time I'm lining up that the cording in, uh, inside the groove. But I can't use a needle center position because I'd be sewing through the cord. So I will need to move my needle position because this has a seven millimeter opening on this foot so I can use any needle position. So I'm gonna just to move it to at six. Nope, oh, that's a bit too far. Let me go maybe five and a half. Again, I don't want to have it right next to it. The same reason as before that when you attach it, then you want to move the needle position up maybe half a millimeter closer. So I put my needle position to five and a half and that way is now I can uh, do my typing this way. Okay. Pretty much came up the same way as the one before but uh, again it's somehow I do like this one better because that groove inside this uh, foot just holds the uh, piping co a filler cord really nicely in place so that was, that was uh, uh, definitely an other way to do this uh, this size and then other one that would work great is this uh, piping foot left this was more this that as it came before the mini piping foot and it will work also on those ma more basic machines that you can't move your needle position as precisely as I can do on mine. So on this one, our uh, only difference on this one would be that when I put it on, I can use my center needle position. Let's get this back up in, in the camera. So you can kind of see the center dot on that one will line up perfectly. So that was that's a great one if you if you can't move your needle position precisely, you could just uh, use this one because it put, it puts the needle at the uh, you can use the needle at the center position. Um, other one that for this size would work really well is this one. Again, I would just line this one at the center one, move my use my needle at the same as I had currently at the 5.5, and then I it will be really much slide on that groove exactly the same way. So those those three, okay, those I should say those those ones, and even even this kind. I guess I could add one more, <laughs> add a, add the Teflon coated one. So all of these feet would work on that small size of a piping very well. Well, what about then I mentioned also the invisible zipper feet? Well, they should work pretty well too. So I do one, one thing you do always want to check is when you lay this cord in there that it sits nicely. This is the new or brother invisible or they call it concealed zipper foot. This one uh, works really, really well with the zippers. That is that is my favorite way to put invisible zipper because the grooves on this one are kind of slanted a bit and then it has a little toe to kind of push that coil away. May not be the best option for uh, using in this one. Uh, the older version of the concealed zipper foot or invisible zipper foot has a little bit more open grooves. So this would work and needle at the center position would give me again a good way to attach it. That would work really well. Or this is just a generic one that I had. It's very similar to this one. It's just plastic. So either one of these would work uh, fine too. So. so let me just to use that one. Do one more piece on this one. Again, I miss my knee lever but my camera is between so I can't use the knee lever on on this time so again 
Oh, I needed to move my needle at the center position, so let's just hit reset. Oh, I don't, I'm not right on the groove. There you go. I may move it one or two notches. That will get me pretty good. I moved it actually to four, four, from 3.5 to 4. Yeah, because that is so straight that would help. I'm looking in the angle a bit on this one. So this one would work fine too. But you see, you can't start at the needle at the center position. You have to move it a little bit. Just watch uh, that this foot has a fairly small opening. So you can't move the needle too much. But on this really narrow, this one, uh, that would work also. Well, I said the, uh, the new brother one, I, I don't think it works as, as well because uh, the screws are more slanted, but also the hole on this one is smaller, so I can't move the needle position as much as I can do on this older one. So kind of watch on that one. So it's anytime when you put the foot in the machine that the machine doesn't know, you need to think for the machine. Meaning that uh, you may want to use the hand wheel to make sure that your needle will clear the opening because uh, uh, if the machine doesn't know, uh, if it thinks like it's telling me to use a J foot, which has a seven millimeter opening, so it would let me put my needle in a position that would break it on this, some of these other feet. So that was just uh, using some of those um, options for the smaller one. I'm going to take on a mid-range one next, and then I'll show you also the heavy one. Okay. Now I have kind of a medium-sized piping. Uh, it's a little bit less than quarter inch diameter. And then I just have a strip of fabric, and it's cut a little bit wider than needed. So again, any time when I look which piping foot should I use. That's the best way to do it. Put your uh, piping inside the crew to see does it clear. That will still work on that. Gets a little bit tighter, but it would definitely work on that one. That's designed for at four millimeter diameter. Pearl and piping foot on this one maybe would be my favorite if I don't throw it away. <laughs> and then I could possibly use the smaller ones on these double cording feet also. That would work very pretty well. Just to use the, uh, choose which groove I use and then move my needle position. But I think I'm going to go for the standard pearl and piping foot on this one. It should have a little groove in the front, a little slit in the front that I can put that thread tail underneath. There we go. Again, the same way, I put my fabric wrong side up lay my cord and wrap it around so that way my wrong sides are together and then i will get the oh, i have to keep my hands a little bit away and it doesn't work very well with the camera there we go lower the pressure foot there again i really would love to use my knee lever on this one it was another technique Tuesday video I did about using the multifunction foot barrel and a knee lever, my, but some of my favorite tools in the machine. So now I have aligned it up the same way as I did with the, uh, those, uh, that mini piping foot, but now my needle position is a little bit too close, so I'm going to shift it. This time I'm going to put it to six. And then when I have to go all the way even in uh, to the... Uh, uh, to the right, all the way to seven, makes it a little bit a uh, looser one, so that I can attach it, uh, adjust it then to a little bit closer when I'm attaching it. So six or seven would work pretty well with this one. Again, that made a really nice, my spike. It may be a bit tight. Seven might have been a better, and then when I attach it, I will put it to six. Uh, one little quick tip, uh, because if I select the strength center needle position, I had to push quite many times to get my needle to move to uh, the, uh, the all the way to the right right side. So one little kind of a quick way to do that what would be, let me put in the camera. If I select the uh, the first stitch that is needle at the left position, and I touch the mirror image, now it is at the right. So that's just a kind of a faster way than me selecting. Yeah, I'll do this one. If I select that uh, middle one, and then oops, I'm going to go in the camera in here. 
or then uh, that I would move my little position because I'd have to push it many many times to get it all the way to the still a few more because my machine moves a uh, quarter millimeter at a time so again well now next for the willy willy thick piping my favorite foot for this one is the adjustable zipper foot I could possibly use the narrow zipper foot also I could most likely get fairly close with the left needle position but not quite where I want and especially when attaching it this is my favorite one so this, um, the really really large one of these double cording foot mm, on my opinion is a little bit too tight so I would know I would I would go for this one this foot attaches straight onto the sh uh, onto the machine so I had to take the ankle out and then this is a low shank so that means on my machine because my machine is a high shank machine so any of those high shank machines you'll get a little adapter so I will just to take my my uh, the, uh, the screw out of this one and then uh, uh, insert the adapter that makes my um, high shank machine to be a low shank machine and then I can use any low shank feet Here we go, so I'm just attach that one and I give a little twist with the screwdriver just to make sure it doesn't fall off. And then uh, on this one, uh, it has adjustable, I can uh, screw in the back, I can adjust the different positions. I don't worry about that one yet, I'm just going to attach it first. So then I will just look for that, that little slit open the screw a bit and then I can get my there we go you don't have to take this screw entirely out the top one you need to oh and I didn't bring my pretty blue screwdriver but I'll use this one to back it down so now when I'm putting this cord in and I have a quite a bit wider fabric and this one does help to have a little bit uh, wider than needed so, so I'm gonna um, just to adjust this uh, uh, guide so that I think I may leave it fairly close to the uh, as far to the uh, right side as I can that looks pretty good because I can still move my needle position for fine tuning this one only thing I had to watch that I do not hit that knee, um, the bar in there I can't use it move, move it too far but I think I'm good on that good idea to use always that, that hand wheel to double check on when we get in that close but so I have two adjustments on this one I can do the rough adjustment with the with the, uh, with the screw in the foot and then I can still uh, uh, line up my needle position and I could use either side of this foot and all I have to do is just to uh, keep it close to the cording and, and stitch away Uh, this one really would work any size of a piping however I do prefer some of those other ones for some of the narrower ones because the proofs in the middle but what is really thick one I like to use that, uh, that adjustable zipper foot because it, it, it works great on these heavy ones and same when installing it so those were just kind of went from a, you know, a smaller spine, uh, pipe, filler cord piping into mid size and then uh, the really heavy one well how do we attach these ones so i'm gonna show that next and since i have this uh, adjustable zipper foot in the machine i'm gonna do this largest one first i would most likely want to trim this off a bit well this one i can't really use that uh, uh, piping ruler very well this is so thick so i would most likely just uh, uh, try to even put the ru normal ruler on the other side and trim it to excess so i could use scissors too but uh, you would definitely want to trim a bit well, I'm just going to line it up just roughly on this one. I'm just going to lazy not trimming it. But now I'm going, when I attach on these really thick ones, I normally do them in two part process. Because if I sandwich it between like I would do on those smaller uh, pipings, it's going to uh, most likely move a bit. So these ones I just want to have a little bit more control by uh, doing uh, my first stitching just uh, um on right along that same stitching line as, as I did before and 
just gonna keep in that piping a little bit away so I can see about the same stitching line oh, close by again I'm looking a bit in an angle I will say that I feel I most likely do the worst sewing ever on a and I do the taping. So I tried to show it as close as I could on my previous stitches. And now I'm going to put my other piece of fabric so that it is uh, uh, right size together on my fabric. But then I'm going to stitch it from this side. And this time I want to try to stitch a little bit closer to the piping. That way so hopefully all my other stitches would not show. That is how I have attached this one. And um, so this one again, it was just that it was ready, one of these ready made cording, and I used really thick upholstery fabrics. On these ready made cording ones, these ones, they normally have that cording uh, sewn onto a piece of a tape. So I sewed it first on whatever was going to be the. Uh, the uh, wrong side in there to attach on that one first and then I try to, uh, try to attach on the other side as close as possible and this was a little bit tricky because of that uh, that the lip on uh, on this other fabric so you're gonna pull it far apart I see a bit but that will be my right, uh, right side of the pillow so you really can't see that anymore there. so that will be the same way so now I'm gonna move my needle position just quite a bit closer. Then I could move my uh, my foot too, but if I'm gonna maybe move it, I have a two and a half. So see, I'm trying to go as cl um, as closer in there as I can. That tightens up that uh, pillow cord too. Let's see what we got. If nothing else, an or color combination. I think it came out quite nice. So that way you don't see any of the previous stitches and I have a light yellow color thread on my machine so not definitely the color I would use if this was a real project but that came out pretty good I'd say. So that is how I would attach on this really really heavy uh, whether it is uh, piping or the cording. Well then if I use some of these smaller ones that what I have on these ones, I don't need to do it in two parts. I would just sandwich my fabric uh, between two layers and then move my ne uh, needle position so that uh, this way in here, so that so that um, I will be a little bit closer to the, uh, the, co uh, the piping I did before. So uh, it, that's the only difference on those heavier ones that I will want to do it in two parts. This one I normally would do in one part. Okay. Well, I use that uh, kind of a little bit heavier weight but not that extra heavy uh, a fairly thick uh, piping cord and I just got the one and a half inch strip of fabric out of this gray fabric and then I have a pillow where to put this around so I'm just going to show how I do my corners and how I, co I connect the edges together then on the other end so I'm going to uh, actually I use this uh, double cording foot which is the larger one I believe it's like seven and seven to eight millimeters it's a baby lock foot and that one worked really well for doing my piping but now I need to move my needle position maybe one no, it's not I'm going to use the same one in here I'm going to leave it where it is and then when I do the other side I'm going to then move my needle position a little bit closer because it just kind of flattens it out a bit so I think that works pretty good so I uh, started from the, I know what I decided was bottom on my pillow left a little tail just kind of roughly in the center start it there you don't want to make the join in the corner you want to do it somewhere in the sides and I had slanted these corners a little bit so they are not totally square and that was something I went through on, on that class when I was uh, creating this pillow top so if you want to watch that video it was the crazy bats pillow so it so the reason why I slide uh, slanted those corners a little bit but now when I'm approaching the corner, I was always in the beginning to told that you need to do a little clip just where, the, where your seam is. And yes, you do need to do a little clip on that one. So if my seam allowance is about you know, almost half an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch, I will do my little slit. I don't 
I'm gonna keep my hands away. I notice I'm keeping my hands in the camera. So I'm gonna do my little slit on this cord, uh, the piping fabric just right there. I need to move a little bit so I can snap it. So that way I can pivot. But you see, it kind of curls up a little bit. Well, one of the classes I took from Pam Damore, uh, because she's, uh, she comes from the home decor side, and she had a really cool tip that uh, works perfectly. So instead of just making that one clip, you want to do three clips. You do one about quarter inch after that one, and one about quarter inch before. Well, what that allows me to do is much better to curl, uh, curve that, uh, or to do the uh, corner there. Just do one little more snip. I'm trying to keep my hands away from the camera and I can't get close enough. There we go. So now I'm going to stitch right onto that middle slit. And now if I my knee would reach, I would use my knee level, but that the camera is on the way there, so I need to uh, use the uh, other manual lifter there. And then because the knee level would allow me to get a bit higher. So I want to have that corner, and this helps to have a, a, a all or stylus to kind of really poke that corner as far in there, because we are on an inside corner. When we turn this one uh, right side out, it's going to be more on the outside, so trying to have it as kind of a much in there as I can, that will give me a little bit nicer corner on that. And then I keep going. Let's go a little bit further. I can show that. Uh, so it shows up in there. So whenever I turn this one right side out, I should have not too bad of a looking corner, even with this heavier piping. So I'm going to continue to do this. Uh, uh, rest of the rest of this one and then I'll show you uh, how, uh, how to finish up that uh, uh, at the start and the end point. Okay, now I've done all the all the corners and I'm at the last piece, so I need to join these together. If this was a thinner uh, uh, piping, I could just wrap them around and go over. But on this heavier piping, and even with those uh, kind of medium-sized ones, I will not like to do that because it gives a really back big big lump here and also it doesn't look as pretty. So I like to do a different kind of a join on that one. So in this case what I need to do is I'm going to trim off this a little bit. I'm just going to take out that uh, um, side. Of course I could use a bigger scissors too. I do have bigger ones. <laughs> and then on this other one I'm going to cut it um, mm, let's see a couple inches long. Oh, I just about measured my piping correctly. And then I'm going to undo some of my stitching. So I'm just going to try to undo some of these. Yes, seam ripple would work very well too. Here we go. So now, I could do a, a flat one if I want less bulk, but bulk, <laughs> bulk, I would do a little miter on this one. So I'm just going to a finger press with 45 degrees and then I will just trim that one out. I'll reduce some of the bulk. And of course I could use some of those fusible tapes, but uh, this should work pretty well. So I'm just going to line this one up kind of on that. Uh, the, corners and then I will lay this one inside but obviously I need to trim this a little bit so I need to trim so that those filler cords will just have a little kiss in there. There we go, we just trim this one and then we'll 
just case it just wants to kind of open up so i try to do it pretty quick and then maybe cut it a little bit still too long but uh, see okay you be happy there just keep kissing there we go i think i did it pretty good so that ways my join will just be fairly invisible if i had fabric with pattern you barely would see that little join but this one you have a on the solid fabric maybe show a bit better but it is much less bulk and then also uh it i think it looks prettier that way so that is how I normally do my join. So all I have to now do is to get the backing on this one. And then I would just to sew it from this side, move my little position a little bit closer. That way I should have a pretty nice piping. And when I fold those corners, I think that worked pretty good. That little trick about those two extra clips, uh, that really is, uh, is quite a bit of a, diff a change that I, I never knew that before taking that class. That's why I like to take classes. So that's all I know about piping.